The term cognitive dissonance was coined back in 1957 by a social psychologist named Leon Fetzinger. Cognitive dissonance is a condition where a person holds two contradictory beliefs that are odds with each other. This typically causes psychological stress because the two beliefs are contrary to one another and they can't easily be reconciled. This causes a great deal of discomfort in the people suffering from the condition. So they try to find ways to resolve their condition and reduce their discomfort. They'll do everything in their power to change their beliefs in their minds to make them seem more consistent. I should note that most people in Novus Ordo Church don't suffer from cognitive dissonance because they don't bother to fulfill their obligation to study their religion. As St. Thomas Aquinas teaches us, vincible ignorance of what we must know is sinful. However, cognitive dissonance is a problem for the people in the Novus Ordo Church who do go through the trouble to learn their faith. As they study, they learn that Catholic teaching is truth that cannot change, and therefore church teachings cannot change. However, if Novus Ordo Catholics read anything from sources from before the Second Vatican Council, they are confronted with the fact that the Novus Ordo Church has changed numerous Catholic teachings. For example, the Council taught that Muslims together with us adore the one merciful God. It teaches that heretics have some sort of partial communion with Catholics. It teaches that baptism of heretics somehow incorporates them into the mystical body of Christ. There are dozens of errors flowing from the Council and I've documented many of them in hundreds of videos on this channel. Many of the people who follow this channel were originally in the Novus Ordo Church. However, through study, they too were confronted with the fact that the documents of the Second Vatican Council conflict with about 2,000 years of consistent Catholic teaching. But after prayer and discernment, they made the only possible rational decision. They determined that Catholic truth resides in traditional Catholicism, and the Novus Ordo Church is deviated from that truth. That was the only rational resolution that could possibly put away their cognitive dissonance. In this way, there is no more contradiction or discomfort of trying to reconcile and maintain contraries. I'm going to discuss cognitive dissonance over the next couple of videos. In the next video, I'll discuss the mental gymnastics that Novus Ordo Catholics use to try to harmonize what cannot be harmonized. But in this video, we'll discuss some of the things leading to cognitive dissonance. And I'm doing this with the help of some viewers of this channel who gave their thoughts in the community section of this channel. Mr. Joy wrote, Cognitive dissonance can be seen in the false ideology of the hermeneutic of continuity. With the issue of the hermeneutic of continuity, we see that even with the Novus Ordo Church, we see a rupture. Pope Benedict invented a fiction that he called a hermeneutic of continuity. He fooled many people into thinking that the Second Vatican Council could be interpreted in a way that was consistent with Catholic truth. But now, Pope Francis has discarded Benedict's masquerade. He openly rejects any need for continuity. It may be that in the long run, Francis is better than Benedict in some ways because he has shocked at least some Novus Ordo Catholics into realizing the awful truth. Benedict, on the other hand, was more subtle and he fooled many into maintaining their condition of cognitive dissonance. Humberto Saldano wrote, Cognitive dissonance can be seen in the false adaptation of modern ecumenism. Not all faiths lead to salvation, but ecumenism teaches that the Catholic Church is just another option. Novus Ordo Catholics are taught that ecumenism is a good thing. In fact, nowadays, it's not a means to some fuzzy, poorly defined end, but it's an end unto itself. Pope Francis has used the phrase, a sin against ecumenism. So, ecumenism is not just a tool, it's some sort of Novus Ordo dogma. But if Novus Ordo Catholics stumble upon older church documents, they see that ecumenism was regarded as a bad thing because it fostered indifference. There's only one truth, and if there's only one truth, there could only be one true religion. In his Syllabus of Errors, Pope Pius IX condemned the proposition that every man is free to embrace and profess that religion which, guided by the light of reason, he shall consider true. One person wrote that cognitive dissonance is caused when some Novus Ordo Catholics read about Catholics in the past being martyred for not kissing the Koran, and then seeing St. John Paul II kissing one. Please check out my video on Koran kissing in the Questions Novus Ordo Catholics Can't Answer playlist. Johannes K. Laxmana wrote, The Church teaches that the Eucharist is a summit and source of Christian life. Yet the Novus Ordo Diocese where I live has since about a year ago ordered parishes to reduce the number of Masses on Sunday and weekdays, 
limit attendance to 25% capacity, restrict the age group to 18 to 59, and close adoration chapels and Marian shrines. The diocese encourages lay people to bring the sacred host to those barred from attending Mass and receive it in their homes. The Novus Ordo Church is content with being subject to the state. It makes no objections to being shut down. And this is a stark contrast to the way the church reacted during the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. Please see my video that I did last year on the subject, which I have linked down below. Latin Rite Mass wrote, The most notable cause of cognitive dissonance is the constant preaching of how Vatican II taught this and that, with no reference to what the church taught before that. They desperately want to make Vatican II consistent with the historical church, but they can't. And this is probably the biggest reason that most Novus Ordo Catholics accept the errors of Vatican II. They don't even know that there are any changes or are any errors. All they ever hear or read about are post-conciliar documents. But again, this is a state of ignorance which can be overcome by study. But some Novus Ordo Catholics do study their faith, but they stay in it for various reasons. And we'll discuss some of those reasons in the next video. But until then, how do you think Novus Ordo Catholics try to harmonize the contradictions? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back again within a week with another one. But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page and my Twitter page. Every day I post additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel. And also, please pray for the church.